Okay, so um, I'll try to keep it quick because uh, we're, we're a bit short on time. So basically, AWS IoT is uh, like many of the services we, we announced in the past. It makes it easier for you to build systems that you already built, perhaps. Uh, I will take as an example uh, Amazon RDS. Yes, you can definitely run your relational database on an EC2 instance, but it's not because you know how to do it that you have to do it. Right, so RDS removes you all the burden of managing relational databases by packaging a relational database on an EC2 instance just for you. So AWS IoT is going to be exactly the same for IoT backend architectures that people were already doing before this service. There were many IoT uh, services running on AWS where customers were running their own elastic load balancers with auto scaling groups, with a fleet of instances to absorb the data and so on, and then redirecting this data to Kinesis and so on. So in a nutshell, just before going to the demo, I just wanted to highlight how uh, AWS IoT works. The central point is the device gateway. So as the name implies, it allows you to absorb all the information that comes from IoT devices. Those IoT devices, they can execute the AWS SDK. So now it comes in, uh, uh, in C, in uh, Arduino, and uh, well, for many of other languages that are we're already using, uh, we're already running in devices like Raspberry Pis or Arduinos, like the JavaScript library, the, uh, the, Python, uh, the Python SDK, and so on. The nice thing about the SDK, and something that is unfortunately sometimes overlooked in, uh, in IoT, is that it's, it contains a, secure, uh, a security layer and authentication mechanism based on, on AWS STS, right? So you don't have to worry about establishing a secure connection with your IoT device. And even for those very um, low power IoT devices, like for example, the Arduino first generation that have 16, 16 bit processors, they still can, do, can establish a secure connection, not based on a, on a HTTPS, like people were trying to do it in the past. It's, it's very difficult for a, a very small device, especially if you only have like registers of uh, 16 bits to establish a full blown HTTPS connection. Uh, you can do it with, uh, uh, with symmetric, uh, symmetric encryption. Then once you collect all this data in a secure way, two important features. The first one is the rule engine. So it's uh, one of the pivotal points of this service. It allows you to, uh, to filter input and to redirect it to pretty much anything you want. One AWS service, another endpoint running in another data center, in another cloud, pretty much whatever you want. And uh, another part, which is uh, one of the most exciting uh, features of this service, is the, uh, the shadowing system. So perhaps the best way to think about it is uh, when you have an IoT device, you often have like intermittent internet connectivity. So think about, for example, an autonomous car. So the car is, uh, is um, driving under a tunnel, no internet connectivity. Still, what the device shadowing system allows you is that your backend system can communicate with the shadow of the device, like a virtual device. And then the SDK will reestablish the state when the connection is backed up. I'm gonna show you how this works also on the, on the demo. And uh, well, last point, the device registry. A registry that contains the list and the unique IDs of all your devices. And it's pretty handy, for example, if you want to not only blacklist some of your devices that are now uh, not running correctly, or you want to, uh, to move them aside from your production system. Or for example, when you have, which is pretty, pretty often the case in, uh, in IoT projects, you have different devices with different hardware and you need to push different software updates to those devices, right? You first, let's say that you first launch your air quality probes based on Arduino devices, and then the next generation you are gonna build them I don't know, using Raspberry Pis or whatever, uh, or like Intel Edison platform. So you're gonna have to maintain code for those two different platforms and the re device registry will allow you to know which devices run on which platform and redirect software updates to them. And that's, that's in a nutshell what's the IoT, uh, AWS IoT platform, what it, what it provides. So um, quick point on security because this is very one of the headaches uh, people have early on when they implement IoT uh, IoT solutions is um, a lot of people are trying to do it with HTTPS, but as I mentioned, HTTPS consumes a lot of CPU power and a lot of electricity, which is often not available in small devices. What we do offer is authentication both on HTTPS or on TLS. So we, uh, we can receive messages using MQTT. 
But for those of you who know the, the protocol well, MQTT is a bit of an old protocol in the industry. It has been used for something like 20 years, and uh, it doesn't come with any security whatsoever. What we do on AWS IoT is we wrap MQTT into a TLS authentication and encryption layer. So you have symmetric key exchange that allows your devices to securely communicate with the backend using MQTT. Okay? And then from an architectural point of view, uh, one of the interesting paradigms is that AWS IoT allows you to move away from the classic architectures that people have been used to uh, implement when they were building um, HT, uh, well, HTML-based applications or mobile applications and so on. It allows you to have a paradigm where you have like a, a, a huge fleet of, of uh, devices who are publishing messages and you have the, uh, the device gateway that acts as a bus, a little bit like in the old school SOAR architectures. And this bus can then redirect messages to the different subscribers or different, different components on your architecture who are going to treat those messages. And the way it works is quite interesting is that we, we use the SQL language to filter messages. So, so, so as you can see here on the bottom, uh, there's a query that allows you to filter all the messages that are coming uh, from the devices that send the signal uh, that they detect the color red. So here's perhaps a, a, a better example. So keep this in mind. The SQL language doesn't allow, doesn't allow you to search into a database of messages. No, it allows you to filter the messages that are coming through the gateway and then redirect this message to whatever you want. So the redirection part happens here in the, in the second block. So here you have a, a JSON snippet that explains what to do with the messages that, that match this SQL query. So we use SQL because it's a language that pretty much anyone knows. So you don't have to relearn anything. And then you can specify what to do with the message in this, uh, in this JSON snippet. Here it's redirecting the message into a SNS queue. But pretty much you can do, as I mentioned, you can do whatever you want. You can, uh, once the message is filtered, you can push it into a DynamoDB database, into a, a Kinesis stream, a execute a Lambda function, or call any other HTTP endpoint that is running on uh, uh, anywhere else. So what I'm going to show now is, um, is a very simple demo with, um, uh, with this device. Uh, so this is the, uh, the IoT button that we gave away in, uh, in reInvent. So it's a, it's a very simple device. Let me show it to you perhaps um, like this. It's a very simple device that uh, basically, there you go, that basically features um, a button that is Wi-Fi connected. So when I press the button, uh, it just launches uh, a Wi-Fi connection, sends a message to the back end, and that's, that's pretty much it. So now if I go to the console, oh, let me make it this perhaps a bit larger. So I go to AWS IoT here, and um, you see, I already pre-configured my, uh, my button. So, so the button is declared here. I have the ID of the button. And uh, let, me, uh, let me just remove the, the, shadowing, uh, the shadowing state, because this is something I wanted to, to highlight later on. Uh, this is where you declare, in the rules of the button, this is where you declare what's going to happen when you press the button. So here's the SQL query that I, uh, that I described earlier. So I'm not filtering anything here. I'm just taking all the messages. And for all the messages that are coming, I'm executing this SNS action, which is basically just sending an email to my, uh, to my inbox. So, so this is my inbox. And um, yeah, it's, it's like a dream uh, email inbox. No, no one has one like that, completely empty. But yeah. So, um, so I'm using the, the mobile hotspot of my, my cell phone. So now I'm, I'm pressing the button. And you're going to see the button blinking white. So now it's looking for the hotspot. Uh, as soon as it's going to find it on my mobile phone. Uh, that's the demo effect. Oh, here it is. So now it's found, so it establishes a connection, and it should be blinking green. Here we go. And you see behind the message has been received. OK, so, so I didn't do anything fancy on the message. I said, well, take all the data that is inside the, the device, 
uh, the ID, the voltage, if I, if I did a simple click or a double click. And um, okay, and that's, that's pretty much it. So, so far, so good. It's pretty simple, but um, let me show you uh, how we can go uh, a little bit further on. And, uh, and for example, cr let's create a, a DynamoDB database and insert those messages into a, uh, into a DynamoDB table. So for those of you who never used uh, DynamoDB, uh, in a nutshell, DynamoDB is a, is a managed NoSQL database. Oh, here we go. So I'm gonna call the, uh, the table um, DynamoDB, so uh, IoT demo, so the primary key is gonna be the, uh, I'm gonna add a sort key as well, so I'm gonna say that it's the, the device ID, and then uh, I'm gonna do a timestamp series. Timestamp, okay. So I'm not gonna use secondary indexes, um, and uh, so that's pretty much it. But the table is, uh, is being created now. So now what I'm gonna do is go back to um, the IoT interface on the management console. And I'm going to add another action. As you can see, I can create multiple, uh, the same events can, can trigger multiple actions. So send an email, but also insert a message into, into DynamoDB. So let me just wait to see if the, if the table is created. Should be, should be ready by now. Yeah, so the, the table is created and as you can see, there's, there's nothing inside. Okay, so now I go back to AWS IoT and I'm gonna um, edit the actions, add a new action and the action will be insert a message into DynamoDB. The table is here, here we go. And now, so as the hash key value, I have a language that allows me to select stuff that is inside the message that I can put now into the DynamoDB table. So, uh, so the language is, uh, is, and the fields are described in the, in the documentation. So if I take the field serial number that was in my email, I wanna, I'm gonna insert that into the hash key value, so the primary key of my, uh, of my table. But it's not, only, it's not only labels, I can also execute a function. So here I'm executing the function timestamp, which as the name implies, just um, generates the timestamp of when I receive the message. And uh, obviously because AWS IoT is a separated service from DynamoDB, I need to, I need to give it uh, an IAM role to give, him, uh, to give to AWS IoT the access to DynamoDB. So this is an IAM role that I created just before, uh, just before coming here you know, that allows AWS IoT to only write into, into this DynamoDB table. And that's pretty much it. So, so now going back to the, uh, to the button. So I'm gonna press it again. And uh, once, it's, uh, once it's connected, yeah, every time it needs to, to recreate and reestablish a new, uh, new Wi-Fi connection. So once it's done, it should be blinking green. Okay, so now I should not only have received an email, but also, um, a message into the DynamoDB table. So here it is. Okay, so well, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to filter messages and to do, to do very simple actions based on this. But um, this is what I would call like very uh, first generation IoT, like the, the projects that you typically see in, uh, in smart cities, which is collecting data from sensors and then putting like a, a nice UI on top of this, uh, the, this sensor data in order to visualize it and so on. But as we discussed about Lambda, um, recently I came across a blog which is really nice. So I will rec highly recommend you to, to go to this website. It's uh, serverlesscode.com. So if you, wanna, if you wanna learn more about Lambda, uh, give it a shot. And uh, one of the posts was something that I I was doing myself before with uh, Luzi, Bash scripts, and Perl uh, scripts as well is uh, uh, schedule EBS snapshots. So I had like a, a Bash script that was just scanning through my EC2 instances just to do regular backups every, every week, and then trigger snapshots. So obviously this script had to run somewhere, but now that Lambda can run on triggered functions, 
um, you, could, you could have like a Lambda function that does exactly this, it scans all your EC2 instances, takes the list of EBS volumes, and create a snapshot. But now because we have a button, you can couple that with a button. So you can create what, what would be like a, a backup button, right? So your manager comes and says, hey, you need to run the backups this weekend and so on. Yes, done. <laughs> so the POS is really well explained. And I, uh, um, I really recommend you to, to go to this website. So it explains how to set up the IAM permissions. I already did it. So, um, so the, the code is, um, is about here. So it shows how he's using Python, so he's using the, the bottle library. And uh, the code should be in the bottom, where is it? So, hold on, so yeah, here is the code. Okay, so I'm gonna just copy paste this code in, the, in a new Lambda function. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's gonna even like not take all the EC2 instances, only the EC2 instances that are tagged backup. Right? So I go back to the console and I go to Lambda. I'm going to create a new Lambda function. So here it is, I'm getting started. So uh, those are a couple of examples of uh, Lambda functions. So I'm going to skip this. When you create a Lambda function, first thing, you need to give it a name, snapshotter, uh, create snapshots. So you see here the code is either JavaScript, Java 8, or Python. Um, so I'm just going to do the lazy copy paste here. So here I'm, I'm copy pasting uh, the code, but as uh, Ian mentioned, uh, for example, if you are using other languages or if you are using like pre-compiled C or C sharp, you can upload a zip file with whatever li statically linked library uh, you want to use. So the only parameters I need to add now is another IAM role for the, uh, for the snapshot of function because this function needs to be able to list your EC2 instances, list the EBS volumes those instances contain, and create snapshots. So I, I already created a role for this. I'm going to allocate, uh, yeah, 128 mega, uh, megs is, uh, is enough, and I'm going to give a timeout of maximum 30 seconds for this function. So this is helpful if, for example, you write code in JavaScript, let's say, and uh, you end up in infinite loops, you definitely want to, uh, to kill this before continuing too much. And um, that's pretty much it. So now the function is created. I go back to AWS IoT. So I'm going to add a new action. And the action will be insert this me message into a Lambda function. Oh, let me refresh. Because the Lambda function wasn't wasn't created already, so add new action. Add it on Lambda. The function is here. Here you go. Stop shorter. So, so now if I go back to the console on EC2, I created a couple of instances again just to, to prepare this uh, this demo. Nothing nothing really fancy. Just like a five, well six uh, T2 micros uh, that have uh, EBS volumes. So you see the volumes are here. It's the, the root volumes of the, of the EC2 instances. And uh, there is no snapshot. So again, uh, the hotspot is still here. So I'm pushing the button, establishing the connection. Should be blinking green. And as soon as the, the connection is established, not only I receive an email, insert a message into DynamoDB, but I'm also be taking the uh, the snapshots of the of the volumes. Here we go. Okay. Okay. The the last thing I want to show you um, is the the shadowing state because from from my perspective this is one of the most interesting things because so far what we saw. Okay, we can argue that everything I did you could, you could do it with a mobile application or with like a okay nothing really fancy but. The, the real strength of IoT devices is when you can have your backend communicate with the device itself, well, ideally something fancier than just a, a button, uh, to do things like control a robot or like open, close a door, like remotely control devices from your backend. And, and the way you do it with, uh, with AWS IoT is uh, communicating through this shadowing state. So, so for example, here I'm going to update the, the shadow state of the, of the button, which is a you can think about the shadow state as a proxy to the device, right? 
And the way I communicate with this button is very simple. The, the API of this button is, uh, is pretty straightforward. As you saw, there's a LED, and I can control the color of the LED. So I can, what I can say is here, um, sorry for those of you in the back, I can say that the red should blink first red, and then blue, and then purple. So I update the state. So now this state is sent to the device, but the button is off. So obviously I can't, I can't receive the data. So the next time the button is going to connect, it's going to receive the, uh, receive the state. So here we go again. So now you should see the button blinking not only in white when it's finished. Oh, crap. <laughs> Uh, it should work uh, again. So look at the color of the button, not the phone. The hotspot is on. Yes. So as soon as it's connected, it should. There you go. It downloads the state uh, set up by your code, and it changes the color of the of the LED. So again, nothing really fancy. I just have a button and a LED, but just to show you the the mechanisms of uh, uh, of AWS IoT. So and. Um, just to finish on this, there's many uh, many things you can do uh, on top of uh, on top of a simple button. We run a hackathon. People had uh, uh, fancy ideas. Um, I was working with the uh, with a user group in Italy, and they are going to soon publish the source code. I don't know if the the TV series uh, Lost was popular here in the UK, uh, but for those of you who saw it, you know in the in the first seasons, there's a guy who is in a trapped in a hatch, and he needs to press a button every 30 minutes. Otherwise, there's a nuclear bomb that is going to, to blow away, right? So what they do is, uh, it's a company, they have a, a development environment on a separated AWS account. And basically, they shut down all the instances at uh, 8 PM just to save on cost. And then they run the instances back at 6 AM. So if you're a developer and you're working late, well, at 8 PM, everything is going to shut down unless you run and you press the button, and then you have an additional 30 minutes. And then the countdown goes again, and you can go back and press the button. So this implementation came from the uh, Amazon Dash button, which for the moment is unfortunately only available in the, in the US. So it's a pretty simple device that, as you can see, allows you to very easily order stuff from, uh, uh, from Amazon.com. But even with this very simple backend, which is only sending a message, you can, you can do like very interesting projects, like uh, one of the most exciting ones that I saw with this very simple hardware is the, uh, the GlowCap project, which is basically uh, um, a container for, uh, for pills for, for medicine. And uh, uh, it's going to blink to remind you that you have to, to take your medicine. Because well, one of the side, it has been introduced at the beginning for Alzheimer patients, because one of the obvious side effects of Alzheimer's is that you're losing memory, so you forget to take your medicine. right? And, and this was the problem. So you see here, each line is a patient. And every green dot is when the patient took the dose, and the red one is when they missed the dose. So you see the problem, for example, with this patient, right? So it's, uh, not only is it going to have a hard time getting cured, but it goes to the doctor, uh, pays for the doctor visits, but then gets the medicine, pays for the medicine, and it doesn't get cured because it doesn't take it. So it's, um, uh, the benefit of the, uh, of the glow cap is that is gonna is gonna be reminded to take it, so that's the the effect of it. And the implementation is pretty straightforward. So instead of having this press button every time you open the container, it does the equivalent of pressing the button and sending the signal. And this is something the pharmacist can remotely control in order to assign to each uh, to each uh, capsule to each cap container uh, uh, the doses that you need to take for each patient. So. To get started, uh, so far, we don't have those devices. We are planning to try to get those, but uh, I have no, no specific time frame uh, or any idea if it's going to be possible or not. If you're in a hurry, uh, you can go, for example, on amazon.co.uk, buy one of those starter kits. Uh, Ian has one. He can, he can show you how it works. I will heavily recommend you the ones from, uh, from Seed Studio, especially if you are not good on electronics. Uh, they are very, very easy to get, uh, to get started. They are compatible with Arduino Shields that now are pretty much, I would say, the standard in, uh, in, uh, um, uh, for, uh, for IoT devices in order to, um, to test sensors. You can even buy like uh, radioactivity sensors on, uh, on Amazon.com. And for the rest, um, for more information, go to the uh, uh, AWS IoT website, aws.amazon.com slash IoT. You will see the free tier is pretty generous. You have 5 million messages per month for free. And again, if you have any question, don't hesitate to come back to us. Thank you so much. Cheers.
Hi, I'm Paul from NorCloud. I'm country manager for the UK business. Welcome to the AWS User Group UK's reInvent Recap Meetup. We hope that you enjoy this selection of videos. NorCloud is an AWS premier consulting partner, helping organizations, whether they be startups or enterprises, with their journey into the cloud.